Good afternoon. Uh, this is the getting towards the end of the atomic structure, electronic structure of atoms. And today we're looking at the periodic trend of ionization energy. It's one of the big ones and um, quite often a lot of problems are asked relative to this concept. So let's look at a couple things we're going to look at here. Um, what is ionization energy? Is ionization endothermic or exothermic? Um, how does Coulomb's law affect ionization energy? How does ionization energy change relative to periodic table and why? How does ionization energy change relative when we're relative to, let's say, ions? Like if you have an ion, how does that work? Um, how does the first ionization energy differ than the second and third ionization? So uh, what that means is when you've taken off multiple electrons, and does it get higher, lower, or how do you know when it changes? So <clears throat> when we have, uh, an, uh, what is ionization energy? Okay, so this is just defined as um, the quantity of energy needed to remove an electron, okay? Now, we have here a situation here is where we have a proton, a certain magnitude of positive charge and of course as we start adding more protons that because they're all clumped together we get larger and larger positive charge so we have a positive charge here and at some point we have some energy levels with some electrons on them and it is asking us okay um, if I want to simply separate this negative charge from this proton then how much energy will I need to add to this thing to pull a positive thing apart? This is referring to Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law is force equals, um, or proportional to, put the equalization constant in there, charge of the pro nucleus, charge of the electron, divided by the distance between the two. So at this point, um, we can make this pretty cut and dry in the fact that mathematically there are only two parts the quantity of nuclear charge and because those are all clumping together this positive nuclear charge can get bigger and bigger as you add more and more protons the electrons are spread out so essentially since this electrons are in different spots it doesn't really affect this electron and therefore that this guy will only ever be uh, the charge on a single electron. And the distance between the two is the distance, well, the distance. The farther away, the easier it is to remove the electron. So this thing is essentially radiating some electrostatic attraction. And the farther away it is, um, the more likely it is to be easier to remove. Now, only thing on here, this drawing that is not in the mathematics and would cause some deviation. Uh, from that mathematics is what's called shielding. So at some point they've done some mathematics and some testing and said, well, we should have a little higher ionization energy than what we're actually getting. Turns out that some of the, the theory is, is that some of these electrons block some of the positive um, electrostatic attraction from the nucleus. So this is ionization energy will be slightly lower because of shielding. Um, either way, um, another way to state this is what's called uh, posit um, effective nuclear charge. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that for a moment. Um, effective nuclear charge. That is essentially saying, based on the positive section of nucleus, how much of it effectively reaches the outer limits. Um, it's a very simple calculation, charge. Um, and I'm not so worried in the calculation, just understanding that um, the more electrons you have between the two, it sort of shields this. Both these guys will have the same um, effective nuclear charge. 
Um, you essentially, in order to remove this, you need to fight off or resist that effective nuclear charge. So, um, in this case, for the ionization energy, it's simply going to be uh, how far away it is and how many protons there are. So, let's move on to our um, next question. It says, is the ionization endothermic or exothermic? Well, because we're adding energy in to the process, so this is going to be an energy draining process. We're never going to get energy back for removing an electron. There is a, we're, we're breaking a force. We're separating a negative and a positive. So um, this is usually going to be an endothermic process. Now, in this case, let me give myself a little more room here, just so I'm clear on this, is that if I were to take, let's say, a sodium atom, which has one valence electron, and I'm going to remove that electron to form sodium plus one ion and an electron. So you might say, well, yeah, well, that's, that's something that sodium atoms really want to get rid of the electron anyway. So how come that's an endothermic process? Well, it turns out that um, no matter what you, you, you need, okay, what you get from it, um, you still need to separate that energy. It might be a small amount of energy needed, but still will be um, endothermic. Now, in this case, this electron can then go and feed another process, let's say uh, fluor, um, let's go fluor, fluorine, which has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Feed that electron plus the one electron yields fluoride, all right, and this thing, in this case, will give off a lot, a, lot of, a lot of energy. So I'm not saying that when you combine an oxidation with a reduction that we're guaranteed to be endothermic, I'm just saying that this one will be exothermic and this one will be endothermic. And we would simply need to add together the delta H for each of these reactions. And uh, in a lot of cases, you will get a negative delta H or exothermic. Um, this is described in the process of what's called electron affinity, is uh, how much energy is released when, uh, when an electron enters um, a positive field. So either way, um, let's take a look at here now and let's see, okay, how, how does uh, Coulomb's law affect it? We kind of talked about this, the magnitude of this guy and the distance between, okay? How does ionization energy change relative to the periodic table? All right, let's go to this slide here. So I want to know that how does ionization energy change relative to here as we go down. Um, as we go across the periodic table, I'll go both ways. Um, so in reality, we're asking ourselves, how does the ionization energy change if we add protons, okay, which is going down the row here. Keep in mind that if we add protons, uh, well, let's just stop, we'll go with that for now, add protons. Um, what happens if we were to um, move it on here, give myself a little more room. All right, now when I say it, when I add, adding protons, I could um, say, okay, I'm going to add protons and electrons. It's, it's hard to discriminate between these two, so I'll do them together. Add protons and electrons, okay. Um, what if I were to, um, that's describing the horizontal movement across the periodic table, okay. Now, what if I were to add enough protons and electrons to simply move down or to add an entire entirely new orbital, or I should even say energy level. Okay, so now I'm moving in this direction on the periodic table. Is it gonna be easier or harder to remove those electrons? So let's just go ahead and start with that last one first and I want to know, okay, as I move down, what happens? Well, as you move down, the atomic radius gets bigger. Okay, so 
as you move down, your atom gets much bigger, and that should be easy to explain why it gets bigger as you go down. We are simply adding additional energy levels. So because it gets bigger, force is proportional to the charge of the protons, charge of the electron divided by distance squared. That increase in size causes a significant drop in ionization energy. So I'm going to say even though the size gets bigger, the ionization energy gets smaller as you go down. In fact, this will eventually be the smallest ionization energy right here. Now, you can think of it as the fact that the farther the electron is away from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove it. Okay. Now, what if we're adding protons? Okay. Adding protons and electrons, what happens when we move horizontally across the periodic table? Again, mostly we're thinking of just adding relative to size, okay? But um, size-wise, it gets smaller, okay, as you go towards the left. The reason why it's smaller is you're adding more protons. More protons, again, um, constricts it slightly. I should say that's not getting smaller. It's getting bigger. Let's back that up here. Okay. Any more protons, it gets smaller as you go to the right. Okay. Smaller. Not only is that smaller, okay, but you're also adding protons. Okay. This is going to cause, in both ways, more attraction. Okay, so smaller meaning it's getting closer to this larger positive nucleus. So because we're getting smaller construction and we're adding more protons, the ionization energy actually increases uh, as you go to the right. Okay, we have more protons. Therefore, it gets smaller to go to the left. This is the smallest ionization energy here. So in some sense, if someone asks you why would, let's say, um, uh, you could pick out nitrogen versus, let's say, fluorine, okay? In order to remove an electron from nitrogen or remove an electron from fluorine, um, it's going to take more, a very large amount of ionization energy to remove that electron from fluorine because, one, it is smaller, but even more importantly, there is an increased number of protons. The protons are going to be, anytime you add protons, okay, you're going to be dropping or increasing your ionization energy. So if I have an electron here, and you have to understand that when I add electrons across a, per a period of the periodic table, I am not creating any more distance. In fact, I'm getting smaller. That's an important point here. Again, pay attention to this for a moment. As I add electrons and protons going down this row, I am adding more protons, I'm also adding more electrons, but I am not adding more distance between the two. So I'm getting increased positive charge, which is pulling in tighter and tighter and tighter. So if you look at Coulomb's law, right, force, charge protons, charge electrons, or distance squared, um, my distance is getting smaller and my positive charge is getting larger. So it would make sense that as I move down a row of the periodic table, the ionization energy is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you move to the right. Okay. It gets bigger as you go up the periodic table, and it gets bigger as you go to the right. Purely from the from the on this one here. Uh, is due to the fact that just plain old distance on the horizontally, it's not only distance, although the, the, the size is small. So when, it, when we slide to the right on the periodic table, our size gets smaller, but only slightly. We're only slightly be, being able to squeeze this thing in. The main factor here at this point is going to be the fact that we're adding protons. Okay, Adding protons increases the amount of effective nuclear charge, therefore more energy is needed to remove an electron. 
So the francium atom has the largest radius to number of protons ratio. Um, so this is the smallest ionization energy. And in this case, up here would be the highest. Increasing to the upper right hand corner. So, um, next, how does ionization energy change relative to ions? And this is going to be an important part. All right, so you just got to kind of look at it and analyze it. We could say, for example, sodium atom. Um, let's look at it versus a sodium ion. Okay, now, in this case, um, you'll note that these two guys have the same number of protons, okay? And as this sodium atom loses its outer electron, uh, it gets smaller, and it gets significantly smaller. This guy gets smaller by an entire energy level. So again, force equals charge cation, charge or positive, charge negative, over the distance squared, because my distance drops, I am going to be kicking up the uh, ionization energy. So to remove an electron from this guy, okay, so I have to add energy in to remove an electron. This, If we say this is energy one, and here, if I'm gonna add energy in to remove an electron from this guy, um, meaning energy two, we would assume that energy one is significantly less than energy two um, because of the significant drop in radius. Again, the, the actual formula could be written as this, or equation, sodium metal um, plus energy one yields sodium metal ion, and then sodium ion plus energy two yields sodium plus two. Uh, this guy really doesn't exist in nature because E2 is so extremely large. Okay. Um, we could take a look at another scenario here. If we were to take, let's say, um, aluminum versus aluminum plus one versus aluminum plus two, uh, aluminum plus three, um, and then aluminum plus four. So in this case, if I were to try and remove an electron, so you have to add an energy to remove an electron, so energy one to remove an electron to give Al plus one. In this case, again, add an energy to remove an electron, Al plus two, add in plus three, and of course, this guy is just going to go uh, to produce that guy, uh, Al plus 4, add an energy to remove an electron. Let's go energy 1, energy 2, energy 3, and energy 4. I'm not even going to bother with that one. But uh, in this case, it, again, all of these guys had the same number of protons. And you kind of always want to be able to assess. Um, the number of protons versus the radius. Okay, as it gets smaller, the same number of protons, I expect the ionization energy to get larger. And it's, in this case, E1 will be less than E2, which will be less than E3. And I would expect that, in this case, um, E3 would be would be okay, but E4 would be considerably less than E3. This would be uh, E3 is considerably less than E4. So there's a big spike here. Why? Here we lost an energy level. And in this case, we have a large drop in radius. So the next electron to remove is this. This electron is significantly closer to the, to the nucleus than is th this last one. So we get a big jump in energy. Um, 
Other examples might be if we were to uh, compare, let's say, an ionization energy of magnesium 2 plus, okay, uh, versus, let's say, sodium plus 1, or let's say, aluminum uh, plus 3. In this case, all of these guys are what we call isoelectric, meaning that they all have the same number of proton, uh, sorry, the same number of electrons. They all have the exact same electron configuration as, let's say, neon. You could even add neon into the mix here. Who would have the largest ionization energy? All right, so at this point, they all have the pretty much, well, very similar radiuses. So radius uh, is similar. Of course, as you add more and more protons, you do get smaller, but it's not as big as the number of protons itself. So uh, in this case, because, um, in fact, the, the atom here that has the um, largest number of protons, okay, is going to be this guy. So um, this guy has the largest number of protons, okay, and they all have the same exact radius. They all have the same number of electrons. So the fact this guy has the largest protons means that this guy has the largest ionization energy. Okay. Now again, this guy's already lost three of them, so it would make sense that to remove another one would be difficult. Okay. But uh, this guy here has um, uh, two less protons, one less proton, and then all the way down to neon. Okay. And we'll stop there for, um, let's see what the last one says here. How does the first ionization energy energy differ from the second or third. We already discussed that. Um, that no matter what you have um, to remove first electron, going to second electron, going to third electron, it's always going to require more and more energy. And that's simply because of the fact that we're getting smaller and smaller. Stop there. Thank you.